most states that had elections scheduled for late March or April have moved those elections. So for example, Pennsylvania was scheduled to vote at the end of April and has moved that election to early June. And one thing that a lot of states are doing when moving these, these elections is trying to increase the availability of mail ballots, uh, the availability to have uh, ballots mailed to someone's house uh, and that they can fill out um, without having to uh, interact with people as a way to uh, maintain social, social distancing. So I want to talk to you about what the consequences of this is going to be for both the primary elections that are ahead and also the general election in, in, in the fall. Often there's this belief uh, among, among people in the public and sometimes elected officials that a move to mail balloting is going to uh, benefit uh, one party or another. I don't think this is consistent with the political science research. I think that a move to mail balloting uh, will not have substantial benefits for, for one party or, or another. And there's this question about whether we should be uh, giving everyone a mail ballot automatically uh, versus uh, having people have to opt into mail ballots. And again, I think the research suggests uh, that this will probably increase turnout by a little bit if we mail ballots to everybody. Uh, but it's not going to dramatically change turnout, nor is it going to uh, dramatically shift uh, which, which candidates are, are, are winning office, whether they're Democrats or Republicans. Um, my expectation would be, based on political science research, that this would be kind of, kind of a wash. So that, that who benefits from this increased turnout? I think there's generally a thought that maybe Democratic candidates benefit uh, when, when turnout is higher, and I, I'm not convinced that that is the case based on, based on political science research. I'm also not that concerned about widespread voter fraud that, that, might, uh, that might happen if we move to a primarily mail balloting system. Uh, this is something I've done a, a fair amount of research on. Uh, and it's not the case that, that, that voter fraud is non-existent. Um, it does happen from, from time to time. Uh, and we do have a case uh, in, in 2018 where there was uh, what I would consider election fraud, uh, which is a distinct from voter fraud because it was being propagated by, uh, by campaigns and, and election officials as opposed to voters, uh, that was taking advantage of, of, of mail balloting. Um, but I think overall, we are much more concerned uh, about the number of voters who might be disenfranchised uh, because of the election system we might use in a, in a COVID world than we are about, about the limited amount of increased fraud that could uh, occur because of our, our change to using more, more mail ballots. There isn't, there isn't this huge uh, difference between the amount of voter fraud we see when places are using mail ballots versus people are voting in person. And there just isn't that much voter fraud in the first place.